What are Hollywood and manufacturing have in common? I'm gonna find out. Hi, I'm Ashley, and today we're going to be talking about automation in manufacturing. But before we get into that, most of us enjoy watching and talking about films, right? But how often do we hear, yeah, but everything's just CGI nowadays? Well, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the use of the word just, because it says nothing of the hundreds of hours it takes to design, animate, voice, characterize, and bring to life a fictional big screen character. And it's similar in manufacturing, because we'll often hear, yeah, but everything's just automated nowadays. And that says nothing of the art of creating something from nothing with a complex combination of hardware and software and getting them to work together over time. Now, we all intuitively understand the need for CGI and for automation creating lifelike worlds and spaceships virtually enables a creative freedom that miniatures and elaborate sets just wouldn't allow. And building hundreds of thousands of car doors by hand just isn't feasible. You'd need whole teams of highly skilled people. It would still take longer and cost more. But the biggest issue is the use of the word just implies that there's something like a magic button. It's almost a little bit dismissive. Is that because everything is just mass produced nowadays and it doesn't take any work anymore to make anything? Well, it's actually a common misconception that all these processes are automated. In fact, recent evidence suggests that less than half of the manufacturing industry has high level automation in their processes. So why is that? Well, the path to automation in manufacturing is not simple and many get it wrong, which is why I've come here to Vitoria in Spain to speak to Nicolas, Hexagon's Director of Automated Solutions, because he knows a thing or two about this. So Nicolas, remind me, why automate in the first place? I think I would take an example. Okay. Uh, do you see yourself holding a very heavy block every day and doing like this every day <laughs> all along the Do the I look year? like it? No. I'm <laughs> uh, not sure. I mean, you, you will have very, very high back pain. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a notion of automation. Uh, how can we help and support humans uh, to perform tasks in a more efficient way, in a more reliable way, in a more productive way? And uh, because also we don't find the people willing to do this kind of job. Uh, there is also a very important topic is uh, in the industry, there are some tasks we need to automate because we don't find the people with uh, the knowledge to do mm -hmm. in car manufacturing or aerospace uh, industry. You have very complex task operation with welding and so on that only robots can perform. Okay. And so if it's that obvious why we need automation? Yeah. Is everything already automated? Almost. <laughs> no, not yet. But there are plenty of factories of small companies that are struggling uh, to automate their processes. So tell me, why are they struggling? Like, what's, what's stopping them from automating? You know, automation is a uh, hard science, I will say. Uh, not everyone can automate. You need to have the process knowledge. You need to understand the technology. You need to understand the robots, uh, the PLC. So you have a lot of skills uh, you need to uh, master in order to automate a process. They want to automate their process, but they cannot allocate the time or the money to automate their process. And so, how do we solve that problem? So you mentioned aerospace, you mentioned automotive, so you know, there tend to be big multinational companies that have the resources to invest in automated processes, right? So who's next and how do we solve those problems you just mentioned? I think the, the best way we can do uh, as an industry is to support them with a better standard uh, of integration build turnkey solutions, build a common standard, and uh, basically um, limiting the hurdle and the gap uh, to automate into these factories. Even the small, even the very small companies, they can automate their process. Okay, so how far along that journey are we of all the stuff you've just mentioned? It depends. <laughs> the, 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 famous, the famous answer. Uh, it really depends. Uh, as you said, automotive, they are already master in automation. But automation with robots, you know, uh, part tending, part handling, and so on. 
but they, are, they have also a lot of progress to be done in the automation of workflow of software. We see uh, ChatGPT, we see all the progress with uh, automated workflows and so on, how to handle the massive amount of data uh, they have in their factories. Um, it's like, I take the, the example, it's like I have a, a big, big uh, book full of data, I just throw it to you and I tell you, okay, can you analyze all the manufacturing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You will be, I mean, you will just be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, so automation can help to support uh, that, uh, how to digest the information and how to turn it into actionable um, actions. Well, I guess this is one of the last questions. So with data, like, so for my understanding, what is this mountain of data that gets generated? Why does it get generated? And what do we need it for? There is a change in uh, the manufacturing. Before it was relying more on the expertise, experience and so on. Now we want to be able to, uh, and prototyping, a lot of prototyping. I take the example of automotive again. Uh, you had so many prototypes before you come to the final mm -hmm. design. Um, we have no time for that uh, and we have no resources for that anymore. I mean, uh, the resource shortage uh, and also the, the time um, constraint with competitive landscape and so on. We need to be faster, more efficient. So we need uh, to basically design manufacturing uh, and simulate the manufacturing. So we need this data in order to simulate the manufacturing. And when we are in the production stage, we need data to control as much as possible and the parts are becoming more and more complex. I mean, when you see an airplane uh, from today, it's totally different than an airplane from the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, new components, uh, new standard, new uh, safety standard, and so on, uh, putting a lot of pressure on the manufacturing and how things are designed. Mm -hmm. So you need to collect this data to, um, yeah, to feedback to your production process to improve your, your production process. It was an amazing crash course. Thank you, Nicolas. Speaking of crash courses, Shall we see if we can get down? Yeah, I think we should call someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put this somewhere reachable. You can just grab those for me. Thank you. Oh God, how did you do that so easily? So many processes have the potential for automation. Welding, milling, packaging, assembly and inspection. So let's take inspection for a second and imagine it's our job to measure thousands of car doors at a major automotive plant. Okay, first things first. We can actually help ourselves out a little by just taking samples from the line. So we don't have to inspect thousands of doors, but we do still have to inspect hundreds, which is an awful lot. So how do we go about scanning hundreds of doors? So first, we need to measure them. Now that we can do that, with a laser scanner. So this laser scanner allows us to create thousands of points on a door in seconds, creating a virtual copy in the measurement software or digital twin. And then what we can do is we can import a predefined measurement template with hundreds of dimensions onto this digital twin and measure them essentially instantly. But we do still need to scan the door. So somebody still needs to run the scanner along it. And that's just not feasible for hundreds of doors. You'd need teams of highly skilled people. And even then, it's not repeatable enough because people get tired or have bad days. And these highly skilled people could be far more useful doing other stuff, like developing other processes or even better, developing new products. So what do we do? So how about letting a robot do it? So now we can delve a little bit deeper into the use of the word just in just automated. Let's imagine we have a robot to scan hundreds of doors. Now, contrary to what Hollywood and the latest AI would have you believe, robots aren't actually that clever or accurate for that matter, but they are obedient, but only to those who know how to operate them, which itself is a very specialized skill. Now, John here is one of these very specialized, skillful people who understands how robots work. He's gonna help us to understand why you can't just ask a robot to scan the door. So John, could you please scan the door? Sure, but uh, where shall I start? Uh, I don't know, like here, just say here. Okay, so could you scan the door, please? Yeah, sure, but uh, which direction should I go? I don't even know if it matters, um, but I, I, let's just guess and I'll say for now, we'll just go that way, right? So start here, then that way. Okay, so, so, can you scan the door, please? 
All right. Uh, how far should I be from the surface? I, I don't know. I don't know anything about laser scanners. I'm just going to guess and say for now, I don't know, something like that, right? Just like that kind of distance. So, okay, John, can you scan the door, please? Yeah, but uh, how fast should I move? <sighs> Again, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how lasers... Um, something like this, like just go like that kind of speed, I guess. Okay, so we can do that. Okay, so now we've given all the necessary information to the robot engineer. He can write the robot paths and now we can get going, right? No, because the robot doesn't know if there's a door there. And even if it would know if there was a door there, it wouldn't know exactly where it was or it wouldn't know what orientation it was. So then we have to add a whole host of other sensors to all of this to make it work, which as you can imagine is now becoming a more complex cloud of devices by the minute. And then we have to test and validate it with slightly different shaped doors just to make sure that any of those minor changes don't make the whole process fall over. The point is, even for one automated process of many, you need a whole host of specialist knowledge from metrologists, specialist knowledge from robotic engineers. You need a whole load of hardware. These experts, don't get it right first time, so you need iterations, so a whole load of time. As you can kind of gather, all of this just to scan a car door. So there we have it, the magic button, or lack of it. So we're starting to understand the amount of complexity involved in automated... Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, what, you... Just go, just go, wait, just go, wait, it does what? Technology is taking automation to the next level. Hurdles are being lowered, barriers are coming down. So much so that an operator can now input a command like scan the door and it will scan the door. Manufacturers now have access to turnkey solutions with automated workflows that allow them to automate a whole process. Hey presto, a magic button. Let's bring things back down to earth, shall we? Here we have an example of what the future of automation could look like. This automated inspection cell allows you to define all the necessary measurements just like you usually would, even on a CAD model, offline, before you've manufactured anything. But the real magic happens when it writes the robot paths for you, in the most efficient manner, only covering the areas that are necessary. And it can do this because it knows exactly where the robot is at all times. So you may remember I'd said they're not that accurate. Well, the problem's been solved here by employing essentially Hollywood motion capture, but this time done with lasers. And that's not the only laser. You'll see that there's the laser scanner on the end, but the robot knows exactly which laser scanner that is. So it knows how far it needs to be from the door, how fast it can move, which means we no longer need to tie up valuable metrologists or robotic engineers to program them because the robot already knows everything and can do it for them. It just works at the touch of a button. And if you need to measure something else, no problem. Give it the new CAD model and you're ready to go. So is this the future? Where non-skilled workers have access to ostensibly complex automated tasks? Well, it makes sense because not only does it bridge the skills gap, but it enables the highly skilled workers to focus on more valuable tasks. So it appears we're on the cusp of a new era of automation in manufacturing. Barriers to entry are coming down and this is great news not just for the manufacturers, but for us, the consumer. Because not only does it mean that we get our products faster and of higher quality, but they even cost less. And instead of devoting these engineers to developing complex automated processes, instead they can be developing the next generation of awesome products. So while movie makers are still on the search for a magic button, it's no longer a fantasy on the factory floor. Your move, Hollywood.